I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim. My dad, Ty. My sister, Maddie. And our salty dog, Stella. We started our adventure refitting a Lagoon 450 before taking on the massive project of resurrecting a sunken 2021 Leopard 50. It's been one heck of a ride, but we're on this adventure to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. Hey everyone, welcome back. We are finally, finally back. And now, for the moment I've all been waiting for. It's time to dive back into this electrical project on our resurrected Leopard 50. If you're new to the channel, we'll put a link in the description below for a video that can catch you up on how we brought this beauty back from the deep. Since it's been, I can't believe I'm gonna say this out loud, almost six months since we started this project, I thought we'd take a little quick trip back to February to show you how this all got started and then bring you up to speed on where we're gonna to start today. I am so excited to be to this point. If you know what's behind me, you know that we are getting ready to start our power series for the 50. All right, so we're gonna test this heavy three-aught cable and I'm hoping that there's no corrosion or resistance in there. There's a little dust coming out of there. Yeah? Oh, that doesn't look so hot. That's corrosion. Uh, yeah, so I really kind of feel like maybe that's the best decision is just to just do it. Just rip it all out and let's just start from fresh. Suck it, <laughs> sunken boat. <laughs> that is a thick pile of wire. Dude, it's a lot of wiring in this boat. And this is just one hole. We've already got a whole bunch on the, on the back of the boat, big piles of wire. This is just what I pulled out of this side of the boat. This mess you're looking at is the electrical space. It's gonna get a major makeover. So to start, I've gotta demo everything out, including the walls and boxes. Next, I'm gonna be making my own mounting platforms, just like this. Josh has swung by and helped me put together some charge controllers on the back of one of these panels. And then we're gonna take it down in and fill in the space. All right, after a lot of work, where, I, where we're at now is I'm gonna kind of take a break and give you a, um, I don't know, a status update about where we're at and what this equipment is and well, why we've put it in here. So to start off with, we've got 348 volt, um, 5,000 watt quattro. These are inverter chargers, which takes our 48 volt power and converts it into AC power. So of course we can run all of our uh, appliances and plug things in and charge our phones and all of that fun stuff. Now, this next box here is an auto transformer and this cool auto transformer um, actually takes this power and converts it so we can use it as uh, like a 60 phase split phase. I'll talk about all that in a future video when we um, get down into the nitty gritty of how the system works and the wiring and all of that. Um, but this then routes to our main panel so that we can turn everything on and on with our breakers. This cool board that we built is has all of our charge controllers. We tentatively have 10 uh, MPPT charge controllers. And then on the right side over here, we've got some 48 to 12 volt DC to DC converters. That takes our 48 volt power out of our 48 volt distribution you see right here and pumps it into our 12 volt distribution so that we can run all of our 12 volt legacy items that are on the boat. Um, this right here is a breaker panel. This breaker panel takes all the power from the solar panels, routes it through a breaker so that we can turn things on and off, and then routes them to our charge controller so that we can charge our batteries. So the final thing we've got in here is our isolation transformer, which of course protects the boat from corrosion or stray current and all of that coming in off of the dock. I'm waiting on some information on this. This is supposed to work within our system, but they're not quite clear. So we're gonna come back to this when we come back to this cabinet and uh, hopefully we'll have the information we need at that point. And then we can dive right back in. You can see all the other cool stuff that's gonna go in here and we'll walk you through how everything gets put together. And now I'm to the point where we're sitting right here, right now. Back to the space, getting ready to actually run electrical in. I've hung all these pretty boxes, 
but hardly anything's wired up. So the what we're going to be doing first and foremost is I'm going to be uh, bringing the wire in off the, sh the back of the boat, so I need to put an outlet in. I need to put a breaker for that shore power incoming going in. Then we need to protect the boat from any sort of galvanic corrosion. And originally, right below here was an isolation transformer. We brought that in. It was a 230 volt unit. We thought we were gonna get to use that. However, unlike the other stuff, like the Quattros, that actually allow you to run 230 or 240 volts, the European or US type wiring, the isolation transformer does not. So instead, we are gonna be putting in this big beast. This is our galvanic isolator. A uh, galvanic isolator is separates the ground circuit from the shore. So uh, if any of you guys don't know what uh, galvanic corrosion is, we have another video back from when we owned our Lagoon 450. I did not have one of these bad boys on there because we spent, well, virtually zero time at the dock. And I knew better, but I didn't put one on. And in the process of plugging into shore power, we lost two sail drives. So we had to haul the boat out rip the sail drives out, put brand new sail drives in, and that cost us a pretty penny. So I'm not making that mistake twice. So this galvanic isolator is gonna go in this space. And then from here, we're gonna take the rest of the power coming in from the shore, and I'm going to route it up uh, right below where you're sitting here in front of these quattros. These three inverter chargers, each of them are 48 volt DC, which will run off of our 48 volt DC bank, which we will get to. But what we're focused on today is going to be the AC that comes in. As the, their names would indicate, these inverter chargers do just that, two functions. They invert power, that means they take it from DC voltage and make it into AC voltage. So that's like your car battery to your toaster. It allows that process to happen from direct current to alternating current. The next thing they do is they actually charge. So it then takes that reverse process in our case, it's gonna be pulling power from the shore or power from our generator. And that is gonna take the AC or alternating current and it's gonna put it into these blue boxes and that is gonna con uh, convert it into battery charging. And that is gonna then recharge our batteries. So the cool thing is, is it can, they can run both different directions and as power is needed on either end, it will actually switch functions automatically to do that. So. I've got this wire coming in from the shore on that outlet I just installed, and I am going to um, hook this up to some bus bars, because I've got to take this one set of wires and run it through these three uh, inverter chargers. So I'm going to put you up in the corner so you can watch what I'm doing. Any of you that see me running all this electrical in open spaces, fear not, I will be building an enclosure around this after I'm done. I originally had some track in here um, that I'll show you what that looks like. That track uh, allows you to put electrical in an enclosed space and uh, just keep it safe for everybody that's around you. Unfortunately, some of these big wires and the amount of wires that I have to run are gonna prevent me from doing that. So I'm gonna be very careful about where I place everything and then when I'm done, I'm going to build a box that goes over top of it that keeps everything safe and everyone's uh, hands away from all the high voltage stuff. All right guys, this is a long and involved process and I'm gonna take in bite-sized pieces for you so that you can kind of walk through how this process works. Now, I do want you to know that I do this professionally, so this isn't, it's not a hobby. Um, and I do off-grid consultation and power system design and um, installation. Yes, everything is done to ABYC specifications. For those of you wondering if an ABYC certified tech is supervising this, I'm actually just a few days from uh, taking my test. So yes, I will be ABYC certified, but I am thoroughly knowledgeable in the um, necessary and requirements and guidelines that ABYC sets forth. So this is not gonna be an exhaustive how-to video. Please do your research if you don't know what you're doing. The big disclaimer at the beginning, hire a professional, make sure you do your research and you know what you're doing. So this is really more of a guide on how I'm doing my process and an illustration for, we'll call it entertainment purposes. But to that being said, now that that's out of the way, the first thing that we're gonna do or that I'm gonna do today is I've already done the breaker outside and a new shore power inlet because the corrosion obviously uh, tore through those and made those um, null and void. 
I have all, I'm from that breaker. I have run this cabling through. Now, my system's a little bit different. You're gonna see that there's only three cables here. Well, why is there only three cables? Well, uh, the short answer is because if you get into 240 volt systems on a boat and you wanna use a Victron product, which I absolutely believe they're the best, I'm not sponsored by them, I just think they make the best product that's out there on the market just because everything works together and everyone plays along as far as the equipment goes, getting, getting along with one another. That being said, they have a lot of 120 volt stuff, which most boats are going to be 120 volt. And 120 volt systems in the US is very similar to European. There's three wires that are used. And those three wires are going to be a typically a black in the US, um, which is hot. These colors vary depending on the region of the, of the world you're in. Uh, white, which will be a neutral and green, which is earth or ground. Now, you go over to Europe, and they also have three wires, but they're running on 230 volts. And so this black wire, instead of having 120 volts in it, it's got 230, again, a neutral, and an earth or ground. In the United States, when we run 200 and what we call 40 volt appliances, or 220, it's gonna slang terms either way, technically it's 240 volts. That 240 volts is what they call split phase. So they take all that energy that's on this black one in Europe and they split it between two wires. So you've got two hots as we call them, or two phases. Those two phases carry your alternating current. If you have a four wire system, um, which every house in America does, you're gonna have a neutral as well, and you're gonna have a ground. Uh, so four wires for 240 volt here in the United States, or three wires for 120 volt. Um, it all just depends on what the actual voltage is and how large the appliances are. So, sorry about the rambling on that, but that explanation is really, really important for this next part. These are all made and designed, well, they're all designed overseas and they're made to run on European voltages. European voltages run at 50 hertz, that's 50,000 cycles a second, and those, and US is 60 hertz. These boxes will run 50 or 60 hertz. They don't care. You put 50 hertz to them, they spit out 50 hertz. You put 60 hertz to them, they spit out 60 hertz. That part is fairly simple. I can go and reprogram that. But these boxes only have three wire hookups. They just have a hot, a neutral, and a ground. So when I go in on the backside with my laptop and I reprogram these units, I take the neutral wire that normally doesn't have power to it, and I tell these boxes that it's gonna get 120 volts coming in. So 120 volts, 120 volts, and I have a ground, which means that to this point, this boat has no neutrals in it. It is just two hots and a ground, like an old school dryer here in the United States. And we'll get to how that gets resolved here in just a minute, but um, when I pull this in from the shore power, I can't run all of these to the box. So I take this ground or earth, and I put in this galvanic isolator, okay? So shore power, boat, obviously this green wire is gonna get hooked up to here. On the inside, this basically isolates out the ground so that there's no direct um, attachment from our ground side on the boat to any stray current that's in the water, in the marina or what have you people can be bleeding energy into the water. And if you don't isolate this, then your boat becomes basically a sacrificial zinc, like on your prop. And it'll start chewing away and depleting the metals on the bottom of your boat. So we don't want that. Um, so this wire is going to run through here. After it comes out of the boat side, it's gonna run up to a bus bar. It's gonna come into the bus bar. And furthermore, there's gonna be three of them. And we've gonna, we're gonna have a ground and two hots, let's call them, or two line voltages. And there's, there's gonna be these two lines. So I'm gonna run one of each of these wires to one side of each of these bus bars. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take three wires off of the other side and I'm gonna run three hots on line one, three hots on line two, and, th and three grounds on the ground circuit so that I'm separating this out between these three uh, quattros. That's what I've got to do first. Now, after we get that done, then I'll tell you the next part. So let's get to it. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this sheathing and I'm going to remove the ground because I'm gonna mount this galvanic isolator 
down here below, I will then take that ground wire, come off of this galvanic isolator and come up through this hole. Conversely, I'm gonna take the two hot lines out of here and I'm gonna route them separately because they're not going through the galvanic isolator. And I'll route those up through here as well. In this process, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to, I'm gonna take them out of this insulation and then I'm gonna add an additional protective chafe guard on the outside of them, in addition to securing them every few inches um, so they don't move and there's no chafe. There's a lot of energy running through these wires and you can see how big these guys are compared to my fingers. They're giant wires. And we wanna make sure, of course, that um, we keep safety in mind. So let's get started with that. I'm gonna pull out a little bit of extra, trim it off, and then feed my insulation on. This is brand new out of the box. I know that it works, but I'm gonna test it. I don't know, I assume that it works because it's brand new. But I'm gonna test this, and I'm gonna show you guys what that actually looks like. All right, so now on this particular meter, there's this setting, and I'm gonna select this until the diode symbol comes up. And the diode symbol is this little symbol right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna test, put my leads on either side. And when I do this, um, I wanna see above you know, 0.5, so like at a minimum of like a 0.6, but no more than like one and a half. Um, typically somewhere between like 0.7 and 0.9 is the actual measurement that I wanna read across this. And to make sure that it's working properly, it should read that way in both directions. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my positive lead um, and I'm going to connect it to isolator positive to short negative to both so 0.787 and I reverse them I'm now at 0.787 so it's the same on both sides and if I go back to actually resistance you see that I do not have continuity through it so that's how you tell All right guys, now that I've got that mounted um, and shore side obviously towards the aft and boat side of the isolator pointing forward, I'm then gonna take and make an extra like vertical loop and give myself a little extra slack on this cable. Uh, two reasons, one, um, I'm already um, gaining a foot of horizontal travel in the length of the isolator and I wanna be able to get to and service and check this lug later if I need to. So the other reason I want it down in here so that when I'm in this electrics cabinet, I can easily reach down disconnect the grounds and be able to test this isolator for in the future to make sure that it's working properly. So it's kind of hard to see this one. I'm going to cut and do this one off screen, but then I'll show you how the other one gets crimped together here in just a minute. All right, so when you cut through this, you want to make sure you just score the insulation and you don't take the blade and go all the way in and lose any of these strands. What you don't want to see is any broken strands at the bottom. And yeah, as you can see, all the way around, we're good. So when I do all the rest of the crimps in this boat or a, a big portion of the pre-measured crimps, I'm actually gonna take this guy and put it in my bench vise. I've got a little jig that I've dreamed up that I'm gonna build to hold this guy. Um, because trying to hold a wire and a lug and both ends of the business end of this guy, uh, you know, it just is kind of a pain in the rear end. So the way I've kind of worked around that is I actually just take the lug and I put it inside the tool and um, I pump it down right until it starts to grab and what I want to make sure is that it's snug enough in there that it doesn't move around but it's not so loose that or it's loose enough that it still moves around a little bit but not too tight that it starts crimping this down then I take my pre-cut from insulation cut piece of wire and I gently make sure that the entire bundle of wires goes inside the lug. Then I kind of hold this like so. I'm pushing pressure on the inside, 
I'm pushing the wire inside with the pressure from these fingers and then I'm holding the top of this with my uh, thumb and forefinger and I just want to slowly start prying down on this until well it's too comfortable to, to smash into my thigh then I know it's in there well enough that I can let it go and I get <laughs> I want to get it as tight as possible and cold weld that together. This is a 16 ton, they advertise, crimp, and it gets a nice tight crimp like that and you can even see where it's starting to smash some of the excess copper out on the sides. Give it a good tug. I know that there's no separation there. So I now can take a little piece of heat shrink, slide over the end. And I do not go past the flat part right here. If I go to here and then you clamp this down, this could keep you from completely clamping down this, this lug. So back it back just to the round part, like so. And normally I use my little torch, but I just realized, well, it's empty and I ran out of um, uh, extra butane. So I'm gonna use the lighter. Do be careful that you don't burn the uh, insulation or the heat shrink you want to actually use the blue part of the flame down here you don't want to use the black part the black part just creates sooting so you want to get down here like so and just move back and forth obviously you want to make sure that you're doing this when there's no open solvents or People don't have, I don't know, acetone or gasoline or anything like that. My friend Josh uh, with CIS Solar, he does some really great work. He's, um, he's kind of like the king of buses out there. Um, he actually uses an electric heat gun. So there's that one. This is going to allow me to bolt this to the other side of the galvanic isolator. And this side will come up with the rest of these wires up here. So I am going to feed this from here up in the loom with this, tie it all together, zip tie it, and I'll be right back. All right, so now I have the wire coming out of the conduit into the shore side of the galvanic isolator. Comes out of this side, runs up back through here into this loom right here that runs right out of the top. And now I've got all my wires right in here. All right, so now I've got everything run up through here. And you can see I have all three wires back in this loom. Now that most of the equipment's in, we can move on to the exciting stuff. I really like using this loom, but it does fray at the ends. So what I'm doing here is sliding a small piece of heat shrink down over the edge and heat shrinking that to the loom and to the wires. That keeps the loom from sliding and from unraveling. There we go. I'm going to let that cool off and then get my bus bars mounted and I'll be right back. All right, so I already have some pre-cut wires that have a terminal on one end and then a ferrule on the other. And this is designed to, to bolt onto here and then run into a compression fitting that actually is just a screw with a plate that screws down and holds these in place. Now you might be wondering, why such a big wire coming in and such a little wire going out? Well. Um, I could run all the same size wire to every single inverter and that would be intuitive. Um, but this wire carries about 12,500 watts off of the shore at 50 amps. These are three 5,000 watt inverters, so 15,000 watts. And the actual continuous duty rate is about 12,000 watts out of these guys. The challenge comes in is that if it's too big, even though I've measured every single one of these wires to the millimeter, um, in fact, Josh did this and was kind enough to make these for me one day when he was working on these um, uh, charge controllers. Um, what happens is, is if the wire's too big, inadvertently, one of the inverters gets more power and then it becomes kind of, well, it's selfish. It's like a hog and it takes more power than the rest of them. So what we wanna do is we wanna as closely match the capacity of each individual inverter. And I know it seems kind of weird, but two of these wires, this is 12 gauge, this is six gauge, two of these wires will 
perfectly carry 25 amps per leg on each of the hots. So even though it looks really weird, it actually is the right size wire. In fact, Victron warned you about oversizing the wire for just this reason. So that's why it looks like I'm running a giant hose in these little bitty tiny wires coming off of it. And well, that's why. All right, now I gotta make sure that the wires are the right length. And I'm sorry I'm in the way on this one, but I've got to decide where these are gonna go to the bus bars. And then the bus bars can evenly be spaced between where all of these wires need to go. Um, so I'm gonna lean over, figure out where that's gonna be, drill and mark all of those and start screwing them in. All right, another important thing to keep in mind is you wanna make sure whatever screws you use, they don't, they're not longer than the thickness of the wood. So I've got a lot of wires running underneath of here and I wanna make sure that I don't puncture or scratch any of that insulation. All right, that's nice and neat. So I'll throw some zips on this um, here a little bit later. And now I'm gonna put all of the small uh, wires respectively on their appropriate colors, get all of that lined up and kind of directed towards each individual inverter. And then I'll snug these down and then I'll have to come back, run all of them in, and then of course zip tie them back to make them all look nice. Also as a reminder, all of these wires are all the exact same length to the millimeter. That's so important for even current flow. Now this certainly isn't necessary, but what I like to do is just keep everything organized. So when you look in, you can see the direction of where everything's going and you don't have this maze of wires leaving. You can easily identify the wires as they come out in their phases, but then when it runs across or to another area of the boat or to this electrics area, everything that's doing the same job or carrying the same load is con uh, contained to its own loop. You'll notice I'm not using the butane torch that I was using previously. That's just because, well, it's out of gas. Although using a lighter will get you by in a pinch, it really isn't the best option. All right, so now I have all my wires in. I've got all of my uh, chafe guard on the wires that run to each individual inverter. Now I'm going to wire them into the uh, AC1 input, so the, the primary input, because shore power would be considered for me primary input. Um, and uh, I'll get all that wrapped up, get the wires tucked up all nice and neat, and I'll show you what it looks like when they're all tucked up in there. All right, it is more than a little toasty, and I think I'm now reaching a stopping point for the day. So I've got everything from the outlet in the back of the boat, through the breaker, down to the galvanic isolator, up to the bus bars. I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now, now that it's done. All right, so I've got each one of these now wired up. I've got ground, hot, and hot. Obviously the corresponding colors. White is ending up being red, um, and then, Every single one of these wires is in a loom that runs to AC1 input on all three of the inverters. So now they've got all the AC running to the inverters. I think that's pretty much gonna wrap up this portion of the project for this week. I'll be jumping on the DC side next week. If you like this video and you really enjoy what we're doing here on this in our nerdy electrical, please hit the like button. If you are not already subscribed, please consider doing that as well. And um, until next week, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next Sunday.